Hello, welcome to the Roundhouse Podcast with Paul Solentrop of Wichita State University Strategic Communications. Thanks for listening. We appreciate your time. We're going to talk about Wichita State volleyball today. The Shockers are on a roll, and their back row is a big part of that success. Coach Chris Lamb has talked about it a lot this season, so we're going to talk to Morgan Weber and Gabby Moss about the back row and, and many other topics. Morgan is a senior. She is from Iowa. Gabby is a sophomore. She is from Colorado. Gabby leads the Shockers with 289 digs and 15 service aces. Morgan has 11 aces and 166 digs. Shockers are 15 and 5, 9 and 1 in the American Athletic Conference. They are percentage points behind SMU, which is 10 and 1 in the conference standings. Shockers have won seven in a row, including a split at SMU. Uh, entering this weekend when they will be headed to Florida Atlantic on Friday and Memphis on Sunday. So Morgan, how's the atmosphere different around this team now that it is firmly in the race? Conference title, NCAA berth, it's all right there for the Shockers. How's that different than maybe the last few years? Um, I feel like we kind of came in with a different mindset this year um, as just being more together as a team and playing for each other. Um, not only that, but like I feel like everybody on the team has had a lot better connections, getting to know people a little bit more. We've kind of set that up last spring a little better, uh, trying to do more team stuff. Um, and like I said, just getting to know people better, which has really helped the atmosphere of everybody on the team. What was your favorite get-to-know-each-other spring activity? Ooh, in the spring? Oh, gosh. Probably spike ball. Spike ball was kind of fun. Like we all got to be still competitive, yeah. um, but you had a, a different partner. So okay. where'd you play spike ball at? We just did it in the multi. Just we in, ended okay. up. I think we just that ended was pretty early, early on too in the spring. Yeah. yeah. Who was the best spike ball player? Did somebody oh, dominate? Gosh, who won that? Like, I think it was Stout. Maybe. No, me and Stout were together. We lost. Okay. I think it was Katie and Izzy. Yeah. Who won, and then they played. Um, um, Ashley and Katie in the finals. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, spike ball, good stuff. Gabby, how do you describe the mood? There's there's stuff at stake. These matches, they all matter. It's a tight race. SMU, Wichita State, Rice are all kind of right in there. What's it like when you show up to the gym on a daily basis and this is all on the table? It's really exciting to know that like we have 100% control of like what happens for the rest of the season. And I think that, you know, Weber kind of touched on it, like we're – so in this together and like we know that we like to say us versus us a lot so like we're either gonna come together and win the whole thing or we could beat ourselves like we know that if we play our game we're always gonna win I think that coming into the gym like every single day like we know that we have something at stake here so working really hard and like really fine-tuning our skills is just like really important to us right now because we do know that like we have a shot at doing something that we haven't done it in a long time here at Wichita State. So, Since yeah. 2017. Yeah, so it's exciting. Gabby, is there a big moment to this to the season at this point? Was there a match or a practice or a speech or spike ball that, that you look back on right now and say, yeah, that was really helpful or that set us in the right direction? I honestly think after our loss at SMU was a really big turning point for us because I think it kind of – lit a fire under us to say you know what like we did not play the way that we can and we can beat this SMU team and I think that it really like was a turning point for our season like we haven't lost a game since and I think that coming around and winning the next game at SMU I think that it really showed like we can do anything that we put our minds to if we play together as a team and I honestly think like it was really just a good momentum builder and a confidence builder that regardless of like what happens like we are a really good volleyball team when we come together and we play together. So I think that the loss at SMU really was like our turning point in like coming together and like knowing that we have a shot at winning. The, the Shockers were swept at SMU on a Friday night, mm-hmm. came back the Sunday, right? Yes, the Sunday. And beat SMU three to one. Mm-hmm. Have not lost that have not lost since, since that Friday yeah. night at SMU. Morgan, how about you? Is there a light bulb moment or anything like that that you look back on? No, yeah, I kinda agree with Gabby on that. Uh that loss kinda like was a shot to the, <laughs> shot to the face. Yeah. Um and it just kinda was a turning point for us where we gotta figure out what we need to do to be successful and be the team that can win the conference and whatnot. So I think I think that really like put ev- put everything into perspective on how like we have to do these things if we want to be no- 
end up being number one. So Chris Lamb has talked glowingly about the back row. I think going all the way back to the spring, he had a really good feeling about that about that group back there. Morgan, why? What makes that group so so solid? Um, once again, I think it kind of has to do with like the connections that we've built um, with people over the spring and going into this fall. I feel like we all feel a lot more comfortable with each, with each other um, and trusting each other to make different moves towards balls and stuff. So. Hi, this is Rick Muma, president of Wichita State University. Check out the latest episode of the Forward Together podcast. Each episode, I sit down with different guests from Shocker Nation to celebrate the vision and mission of Wichita State University. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. So, Gabby, you joined the Shockers back in January, transferring from TCU. What was your first impression of the Littles, and if, did that give you some hints this was going to be a good year for that group? Yeah, from the moment I walked into the gym in January, like I knew this Littles group was going to be really good, like very talented group. And Lambo has said since the spring that we could be one of the best Littles group in the American. I think just having that confidence from them, and we pr- practice together every day, like we knew that we could do something special with this group, and. Honestly, like our littles group gets along so well off the court that it just you can see that on the court and just like the relationships that we have with each other. And I've never been part of a littles group that like trusts each other so much. Like I have no worries that like Weber next to me is going to get the ball. Like I have no fear of that. And like it's honestly so like nice just to have people next to you that you know are going to ball out for you every day and be right next to you when you make a mistake. Like we just trust each other so much that it's. It's really nice, and that's why we're so good is because we trust each other so much. It seems like the same question I ask uh, catchers in softball and baseball. You know, what kind of person wants to sit back there and and go through that kind of physical toll? What Mm -hmm. kind of person is it that wants to sit in the back row? People are rocketing volleyballs at you (laughs) 40 miles an hour. You are. It's kind of the position where you don't get as much of the credit, but maybe you get, you know, it's it's pretty obvious when you don't Mm -hmm. do your job. Describe the personality type. Morgan, what does it take to play back there and thrive? Um, I don't know. It just takes a lot of grit. I mean, we get balls thrown around. you got to throw your body everywhere. Um, and like I said, it's all for your team. So every every point matters. Every ball matters. So whatever that takes, is that's what you got to do. So. Gabby, I think we had this conversation earlier. Did you play catcher yeah okay. I was a catcher in softball <laughs> okay, well, yeah, yeah, yeah that set me up, set, set me up perfectly yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah what is it about back row players liberos ds's I've always just been drawn to the positions that aren't in the spotlight and do kind of the dirty work behind the scenes I've always just loved it that's why I loved catching in softball that's why I love being libero in volleyball like there's just something for me personally that's so rewarding about allowing my teammates to be super successful like, my favorite thing is to get a great dig and then my team, like, smash the ball down. Like, it's – it's there's no better feeling, honestly. So it's one of those positions that you just have to be super giving and it's not going to be about you most of the time, but that's okay. And honestly, anything to make the team better, like, everything for me is about the girls in front of me. And, you know, it's, it's not for everyone, this type of position group, because it can be – grueling like you shank a ball and serve receive and everybody's looking at you like (laughs) it can be brutal but it can be so rewarding when you know that at the like we started the play because of a great serve like a great pass you know so it's like it all starts with us in the back row and our front row gets to shine and get kills for us and win games for us because of the dirty work in the back row and the setters are very similar like setters don't get a lot of props either for the stuff that they do so honestly it's I love it, but it is it can be a grind. But it's all for the betterment of the team. So So the Shockers are holding their opponents to a one fifty seven attack percentage. That's third in the conference, number seventeen nationally. Coach Chris Lamb likes to refer to that statistic a lot. So there's so much going on in the back row because you're getting targeted by serves. You've got different kinds of serves. Sometimes you can tell there's a, a teammate, a person in the back row that 
you know, loses confidence. You've got to help them. Mm-hmm. Take us through some of the communication. What's going on back there as the as the opponent is getting ready to to serve or, or hit at you? Morgan, how's that kind of start, and who's in charge? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily like one person is in charge. We kind of all like chip in with like talking about that, what type of serve it is, whether it's top spin, whether it's floats. Is it going to drop? Do they serve it deep, short, stuff like that? Um, we just all try to communicate and like make it easier on every passer who maybe gets subbed in or for the girls who are already in there. Um, but I feel like that has a big part, plays a big part in our success as well, the communication part of it. Gabby, what's your thoughts on how you keep everything organized? And, and I guess keeping things positive would also be really important in the back yeah. row. How do you do that? Um, I think just like Weber said, like everybody is – communicating back there and everybody has a role when we're in the back row like we talk a lot about like what kind of serve it is like is it going to come short it's this person with a tendency to go deep and I think like even with like hitters like we talk about like okay they're probably going to go more cross here like watch the roll shot watch a setter dump but just constant communication and trusting like what people are saying to you like if Weber's coming to me going hey watch a setter dump then like I trust her to like tell me those things I think that's really important but in service Eve, like really keeping things positive and saying like you know what like you got this like I believe in you I'm right behind you so I think that continuing just to be positive in service Eve is a really big deal because when you're feeling good in service Eve, like nothing beats that feeling because you're just like I'm in a flow I'm in a rhythm and just everything's a three so trying to keep yourself in that same headspace regardless of the outcome is really important because eventually you will get into that flow it just takes some encouragement from the people around you and it's it's awesome when you have people supporting you and serve receive because it, if you shank a ball, it can be tough. <laughs> it can be tough, especially when you have people that are not like helping you. Like, I shank a ball and Weber's like, Gabby, like you got this. Like I'm right behind you. I think that's really important too. Just knowing that people support you through those really mentally challenging moments. So Chris Lamb dialed back the aggressive serving uh, maybe a couple weeks ago now. The results seem to be really good. You two are two of the stronger servers on this team. Tell us about that change and, and how it's helped. Morgan, I'll let you start on the serving. Um, I think it's, well, first off, I think it's helped like us not make as many serving errors. Um, I get being aggressive can be good at times, but sometimes it gets to be a, a little bit much where we're putting a lot of pressure on us as passers um, to have to come back after a missed serve. And um, I think that we've definitely been practicing that more, doing a few drills um, for our serves just to kind of play it more safe, keep it in, let us play, because we have been doing good enough. Our defense has obviously obviously yeah. been doing good enough to keep, hold, keep up with it. Um, so, yeah, I think we've been doing pretty good. I think we've been getting on a lot of runs, serving runs and stuff like that. So, yeah. Gabby, tell us about the mechanics or the process of becoming a good server. How's it? How's it start? How do you? How do you learn how to serve? I think for serving, like the thing that you're taught from really young is like keeping your hand pretty big to get that nice flow, and just like having really good hand contact on the ball to get it to move around. And I also think like a big thing that for me for serving is like making sure that like I'm very good at like location placing because like. I'm not the most powerful person, like, I'm a libero, so there's not, like, I don't have, like, a big, powerful arm swing like Sophia or Natalie who can just rip the ball, so for me, serving is more of, like, a location thing, so I'm trying to put a lot of movement on the ball with a really good hand contact and really being good at, like, placing my serve, so that's more for, like, me, but every single person has, like, a different approach to serving and, like, a different technique to it, like, Natalie's got some incredible serve like that girl can go back there and just fling it and Sophia too and Bada's her top spin serve so I think that everybody has very different like techniques and different goals so that changes for each person but for me just having a really great hand contact to get the passers out of position. So. Morgan serving short seems to be one of your <laughs> your uh, your specialties and the coach has told me that's maybe the hardest serve to execute. Take us through that. How do you get good at, at, at that particular target area? Oh, gosh. Um, I don't really know. I just kind of, <laughs> as, like, you went in high school, I kind of started, like, serving short and whatnot. And um, 
you just kind of, it takes a lot of, like, placement. You just got to work on it and practice it, and um, you just have to hit it the perfect amount because if you hit it too hard, then it's a literal free ball. Like a free ball, yeah. <laughs> really? So, yeah, I know I've been practice. They had us, like, in the beginning of the year, we did work on a lot of short serves, which definitely helped just getting more into the flow of feeling comfortable to do that during a game. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, like Gabby said, having the coaches have the confidence in me to do that really helps as well is that like a change up in baseball where you feel like their their back row is back there they're all geared up for something (laughs) coming at them hard and now all of a sudden they've got to scramble and deal with something totally different Mm -hmm. for sure yeah makes sense so you both of you were described as if there was a board game on the table they will shed blood to win correct Agree or I guess yeah. I was going to say agree or disagree, but you beat me Most to that. Definitely, yeah. um, Morgan, why do you agree so quickly? Um, I don't know. Like growing up too, like I just have always been very competitive. My family has always been in sports. Um, so like growing up around that, I didn't want to lose to my older siblings. Like I always wanted to win. Even like seriously in card games, like there would be tears. Like oh yeah, my family doesn't <laughs> I would do be card so games angry. anymore. <laughs> But, no, yeah, so I just kind of think growing up around that has, like, really made me competitive, especially since we are have always been really into sports, so. Sure. Morgan's background, for those who don't know, her sister, Bree, right? Yep. Excellent volleyball player at Northern Iowa. Morgan won state golf twice mm-hmm. in Iowa, played other sports, too. <laughs> so, yeah, that competitive background would come from all that kind of stuff. Gabby, uh, what? How, did, how does your competitive desires play out? Yeah. Always been super competitive, like crazy competitive in like four square in elementary school. Like I just wanted to beat everyone. <laughs> That's where it started. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always just been that way. Like if anyone is to meet my parents, like you'd be like, all right, that's where Gabby gets it from. Cause like my parents are hyper competitive. My little brother's super competitive. And I've, I, even when I was like 12 years old on the volleyball court, like my coaches had to tell me like, you need to dial it down because not everybody else around you is this competitive. And I would just get so angry. Cause I was like, come on. <laughs> but then you've got 12 year old girls. I mean, I was 12 too, but we were all 12 and some girls were just wanting to have fun. And I was like, no, <laughs> we like need we to need to be winning. <laughs> like this is serious. And it wasn't serious for them, but as I've gotten older, like, and you get to a higher level, like, there's more people like you, which is awesome. And I think that, you know, like, me and Weber are very similar. Like, we'll do anything to win. And I think you can see that on the court. Like, we are flying around. <laughs> and I don't care if I have bumps or bruises because I just want to win and whatever it takes. And Stout is also very similar to that. Yeah. We will do anything to keep the ball alive just because we want to win so badly. And I think that it honestly comes from, like, my parents and my family. And sure. they instilled, like, you work hard and you will win. So I think it's just kind of something that has always been that way for me, always. So is it is it important to be on a team where you surround yourself with people who are maybe not equally competitive but pretty competitive? Is that mm-hmm. part of what you look for in a oh, team? Yeah. yeah. It definitely helps. I feel like I would say, yeah, our team is, like, very competitive. Our yeah. practices have been, like, kind of insane sometimes like we get we get into things a lot and like when we play like it's always a competitive environment um every every side whether whether you're on whatever side you're on or whatever drill we're doing everybody's trying to win whether there's points involved or whatnot whether there's a score or not we're trying to win so yeah yeah so the coaches say they love that. They like the competitiveness. They like the energy. Gabby, how do you do all that without alienating a teammate who maybe isn't where you are? Yeah, I honestly just think it's like picking your battles. Like I mm-hmm. think we know like pretty well who and who can't, who does well under those certain situations and who is maybe not so much into those things. And that honestly comes with just time and like learning who people are because sometimes it does get super intense in practice and people will get upset and it just like, you know, next time, like, all right, like I probably may have crossed a line there or maybe like this isn't the person like I can get into it with like Weber and I, like (laughs) we have in stout, like, will go like across the net and stuff and but there are certain people that you just know and it makes practice more fun when you can get more people involved in like the competitive atmosphere so like at the end of the day like it's all love like we love each other and that's honestly like we know that and so I think that's also important like nothing is personal when we're having a really competitive atmosphere in the gym and you can't take it that way because sometimes 
emotions do get really high and you just have to remember like at the end of the day it's just a game and we all love each other and we all want best for each other so just remembering that when we're in the gym is really important too mm-hmm. so. Morgan what are your techniques for trying to get the best out of people trying to use your competitiveness to help everybody but understanding some people are different um I would say like especially on the court I guess even in practice too like when we're playing like games and stuff I'm trying to always be like the hype person or like trying to get people to laugh like make it fun too like volleyball is fun and it should be fun but like it comes down to a point where we have to still stay focused and whatnot um and so just trying to encourage everybody um cheer when they do something good let them know that it's okay if they make a mistake um that kind of aspect of things I feel like is very important and so I try my best to be that for people so so you mentioned being the hype person are you ever concerned that Morgan Stout is going to like knock you into the first (laughs) row when she comes comes with one of her shoves so there's been a couple times where it's like you got to duck out of the way when she's swinging her arms around I think she almost hit um (laughs) <laughs> there, yeah, there's a great photo of oh Reagan like dodging stout, t- like punch she, like, in the air. She turned around and like fish, bo- or I don't even know what it was, threw her hand in the air and came like across down, and Reagan was like back, leaning it's back away photo. from it. It was so funny. There, there have been some enthusiastic volleyball <laughs> players here at Wichita State, but I don't know if there's anybody as enthusiastic as Morgan Stout. <laughs> so Morgan, I'm told you and Morgan Stout are the leaders in the, the dancing in the in the locker room on the court and you are the team's best dancer. Describe your dance style for us. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's one of a kind, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know if I'm necessarily the best dancer, but I just really don't, mm, I'm don't, I don't get embarrassed a whole lot. So like, even if I'm not like the greatest dancer, I just, kind of like try and make people laugh I'll get in people's faces stuff like that um but yeah I just try to lighten the mood (laughs) important important skill Gabby what's your favorite book I'm told you're a big reader oh a lot to choose from (laughs) oh my goodness this is really difficult I do love to read I probably actually I think it might be a problem because I can like read like a book in like a day let me pick my favorite book okay I'm gonna go with um (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna go with Twisted Lies by Anna Hong. It's like a series of like four books, and I like the Lies book the best. And actually, my book is getting delivered today. It's the eighth book of the series, and I'm so excited. Wow. It's gonna be at home for me. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about this series. What's the, what's the general storyline? <laughs> <laughs> it's romance, and it is kind of about like a friend group of like billionaires and it is just the best book ever they're so much fun to read because it's like a almost like escape from like for me reading is like an escape from like everything else that I'm going in life like being a student athlete can be really difficult at sometimes and just getting to like do something that like I really love and enjoy is like really like nice for me like some people like to go on drives and like clear their head I like to read so yeah. And it sounds like you are a real physical book person, not a Kindle or an iPad person or audio. Well, I have both. I like to read my physical copies, but then I also do like having my Kindle because it can get expensive. Like it's actually a really expensive hobby. Like to get one book is like fifteen dollars. Yeah. But like so like my Kindle, like I pay for like a membership every month, which is like fifteen a month, but I probably read like ten books a month on it. So like <sighs> It, like, evens out, you know? Oh, my gosh. If you were watching on YouTube, you would have seen Morgan Weber just kind of be amazed that you read that many, <laughs> that many books. It's I a am problem. not a reader. I am not a reader, though. So. I try to get, like, okay, so, like, my house. So I live with Emerson, Katie Galligan, and Lauren Wheeler. And me, Katie, and Wheeler all read. And we all read, like, the same books. Like, we'll read them together, kind of like a book club. Emerson wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> that girl, I tried to get her to read a book, and she has yet to pick it up. It's been sitting in her room. Me and Emerson are the same. We're more of the drive around and listen yeah. to music girls. Whereas I can just, like, lay in bed and just read a book all day and be totally content with my life. Well, don't give up. You never know. There may be a book that... Uh, I'll help you. That, okay. gets, maybe, that gets Emerson. Maybe when I get older. Older? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes, <laughs> Katie Galligan. She helped me with a lot of my intel here. Another item she suggested was talking 
with Morgan about shoes. Tell us about your shoe game. That was Katie oh Gallagher's <laughs> suggestion. I have a lot of shoes, whether it's like tennis shoes, casual shoes, whatever. I probably have like over 50 pairs of shoes, and it feeds from my mother. My mom is... Big on flip flops. My mom is big on flip flops, but she also has a lot of tennis shoes too. So that is her. Flip, <laughs> I get that from flip her. Flip flops. <laughs> Do you have a favorite brand style? Um, I my favorite brand is probably Nike, just because they have a lot of different options, and you can go a lot of different ways with them. They have like tennis shoes. They have like the casual lifestyle shoes. Um, but yeah. Going to definitely expand, get more. <laughs> more shoes. There's always room for more shoes. Gabby, what advice would you give a, let's say, a high school senior who is about to start their college journey? What should they look for in a college? What should they know about, you know, starting this mm-hmm. whole academic, athletic, social, away from home? What's your advice? I think that first, when like choosing a college, I think it's really important to. The most important thing, I think, should be the coaching staff because, obviously, like, I'm a transfer, so, like, my values that I had in high school are very different than, like, my second time around in, like, the recruiting process. It was really important to me to find a coaching staff that, like, loved me for who I am as a person and not just as a volleyball player, and I think that that's really important. Like, Wichita, like, the coaches love me for me, and being a great volleyball player is an add-on. And I think that that's really important. And it's really hard to understand coming out of high school, I think, because, like, you're fed, like, oh, you want to go to, like, a huge school, like a football school. And I think that, like, that's not really that important at the end of the day. Like, what's important is that you're surrounded by people that love you. And I think that that's really important. And, like, probably my biggest advice for, like, someone going into their college like experience is, like, it's going to be hard, but, like, love the hard moments because that's, like – that's the best part like the days that are really tough like you look back and you're like wow like I did that like I think that's really important is like really being appreciative for like this where you are and I think that that's really cool because not everyone gets to be a college athlete and not everyone gets that opportunity so being super like grateful for the opportunity and learning to love the hard moments I think is like really special so Morgan did your sister help you with your college search journey uh Yes. Yes and no, I guess. I mean, my sister, obviously, like, she stayed close to um, home and whatnot. She, we lived about, like, 15 minutes away from you and I, so she was always back home and whatnot. But I would say, like, the biggest thing was is, like, I don't know, getting away from home was, like, kind of a very good experience. And, like, I even have talked to her about it, and she's like, yeah, like, I wish I could have done, like, taken that back and, like, kind of got away and like experienced something new which I feel like being from a really small town and coming to like here which I get it's not like super far away and whatnot but like it's definitely a different atmosphere than being 15 minutes away from my parents where I can go home and get whatever I want and you know you know what I mean I know what you mean yeah sure much different What, what, what would your advice be to a youngster starting on their college journey um I would say probably be okay with being uncomfortable and like being okay with change because change can lead to good things. Um, I feel like that is definitely was big with me too because I was not used to big city at all. And well, Wichita doesn't seem like a huge city. I mean, it is the biggest in Kansas. Um, um, that is probably one thing. And then another thing is just, just. I don't know. It's an experience, and, like, it's it's good. I don't know how else to describe it. Just be yeah. willing to be uncomfortable and grow. You'll grow as a human. Okay. Gabby Moss and Morgan Weber talked volleyball with us today. The Shockers, they are in uh, first place tie with uh, SMU in the American Athletic Conference standings. They go on the road this weekend. They are at Florida Atlantic and on Friday at Memphis on Sunday. Morgan and Gabby, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you for listening to the Roundhouse Podcast, courtesy of Wichita State University Strategic Communications. We encourage you to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can find more Roundhouse content at GoShockers.com. Malcolm out near the timeline. Left side of the floor to Baker. Ron works deeper to the wing. Fires a three. Good! Ron Baker with his third three-point field goal of the game, and Wichita State goes ahead by four.